Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to the second day of two weeks of Elizabeth Gaskell. Today I'm going to be talking about her novella Lois the Witch. Chapter 1. In the year 1691, Lois Barclay stood on a little wooden pier, steadying herself on the stable land, in much the same manner as, eight or nine weeks ago, she had tried to steady herself on the deck of the rocking ship which had carried her across from old to new England. So Lois the Witch is my second least favourite Elizabeth Gaskell thing that I've read. It's a novella of about 36,000 words and it was first published in 1861. Before I get into telling you what it is about, I should say that while Lois the Witch is fairly far down on this list, that's for my enjoyment rather than for the interest of it. I think it's a really really interesting book and it is one I would highly recommend and probably more highly recommend to other people than things that are further up this list that I enjoyed more. I think because it is such an interesting and for me quite a unique read, I just didn't find the writing and the characters as good as the premise and that I think is why it's lower down this list. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't read it because the premise and the idea is really good and really interesting and really fascinating. So to quickly explain what Lois the Witch is about. Lois the Witch is another of Elizabeth Gaskell's novellas that I think you could probably consider gothic. It's not overtly supernatural like some of her other gothic novellas but it does deal with themes of the supernatural and how people perceive the supernatural within society. It is a historical novella, it is set at the end of the 17th century and it is about a young woman called Lois who after the death of her parents moves from England to America. She travels across the sea to find the only living relation she has which is an uncle who lives in Salem. And you can imagine what happens when she gets to Salem at the end of the 17th century. She gets caught up in the witch trials and the witch hunts going on at the time. The family she finds when she gets there is not the welcoming family she expected and she finds a lot of complicated strange things going on in the town. A lot of divide over religion and a lot of concern about witchcraft and about the supernatural. In some ways I think this is an incredible book and it's really really interesting. I think it is definitely worth a read especially if you have seen the Arthur Miller play The Crucible and found that interesting or if you are in general interested in the Salem witch trials, especially because I suppose in the same way that Arthur Miller's The Crucible is both like about Salem witch trials and also about like hunting communism in the early 20th century in America. The reason why Lois the Witch is really interesting is because one, it's an account of the witch trials of Salem, but also it's an account of the Victorian perception on the witch trials in Salem. And it's very interesting to look at the Victorian judgment of what happened and the Victorian perspective on that. One of the things I always found really interesting at university as a history student is looking not only at how people perceived events at the time and how we perceive them now but also how people have perceived them all the time in between and I really do enjoy Victorian historical fiction for that sense especially a book like this which deals with really important themes to do with gender to do with perceptions of the supernatural to do with how people treat people they view as foreign and other and to do with religion as well. Gaskell is very critical of the religion of various characters in these books and the way that they use religion in a way that she views unfair. Gaskell who explores religion really really interestingly and was very fervently religious and has other books in which religion is a hugely positive wonderful force. To see the critique of religion out of control or religion acting in that way is really really fascinating in Lois the Witch. As well the way she deals with women alone in this time and what can happen when a woman who has nothing else to fall back on is left unprotected. That is really really interesting as well. It also deals a lot with sort of fever and illness and the struggles and real strife of the time in a way that is really interesting again if we look at it from a historical perspective because it's Gaskell in the Victorian period saying look how awful everything was back then look how much worse medicine was look how much more superstition and suspicion there was in that time in comparison to now in the same way that I think we often look back on the Victorian period and consider ourselves so much superior and consider life so much better which I think it is but it's very interesting as well to see people in the Victorian period looking back on the 17th century in that manner as well. It's also a very fascinating book to look at in terms of ideas of early America and also in terms of ideas of Victorian America. Elizabeth Gaskell is looking at the beginnings of the United States in the 17th century but also she is talking about America as a whole which does have implications on the British perspective on the United States of America in the 19th century. Another thing that is quite interesting to look at in Lois the Witch is the position of Native Americans within this book and within the version of Salem we see because when people start getting accused of being witches the first people who are accused are often the Native American servants that people have and the presentation of these characters and the unjustness with which they're treated was really interesting and something I hadn't really thought about before when I've thought about the Salem witch trials and there are various other interesting important themes as well explored things to do with otherness and foreignness to 
the way people treat outsiders to do with ideas of religion and fanatical religion to do with ideas of fate. Lois's cousin who she meets when she gets to Salem is this young man with this kind of obsessive passion for her who believes that it has been ordained by God that him and Lois should be together and so ends up sort of persisting with this really possessive love of her which she shrinks from and that plot line is really really interesting as well. The more I talk about this the more this should be higher up this list. Anyway that is really interesting as well the way that that explores his personality his views of fate and also the fact that he is kind of emotionally and mentally unstable throughout the book and that this is really explored and is very interesting in the way that it's bound up with ideas of masculinity with him being in a way the man of the house but also having this kind of mental and psychological instability and how that might be as well linked in in some way to witchcraft which is considered for the most part to be a female domain. However I just don't connect with any of the characters. I think that's the thing because Lois the Witch is fascinating. I want to write an essay on it very very much and I want to reread it and study it and think about it cleverly but I don't love it. It doesn't make me smile, it doesn't make me happy, it doesn't make me warm inside like so many other Elizabeth Gaskell novels do and I know that's not the point. Like it's a commentary piece in a way more than it is a character piece and it is a Elizabeth Gaskell book that is driven much more by theme and premise than by character which is not the case of most of the rest of her books. One of the things I love about her so much is her psychological complexity and where there is psychological complexity in Lois the Witch is more examining the psychological complexity of groups and societies more than individuals. I think that's why I don't connect with it quite as much because Lois is a sympathetic character but you never really get to know her, you don't know much about her. Also there is something about the way that Elizabeth Gaskell writes this as a historical novella where you feel quite distant and the dialogue feels quite stilted. So in that sense, while I think Lois the Witch is a fascinating, fascinating book and absolutely worth a read, it is really, really interesting, especially if you're interested in the Salem Witch Trials and that period in history and also with perceptions of America and of the past within the Victorian period, because that's really interesting as well. I just don't love it that's all. I think it's brilliant, I think it's fantastic, but I just don't love it because I don't have that emotional connection and that emotional draw for me and I didn't find it exciting to read, although I found it interesting. But I would still recommend it because I think it is a really interesting read and there is so much in there and I would, like I said, like to reread it at some point in the future. So not my favourite, but definitely one worth reading and definitely really, really interesting. I love all of Elizabeth Gaskell, so I kind of just recommend like anything she ever wrote ever regardless. I'm not sure that Lois the Witch is necessarily the place to start because I don't find the writing style that engaging but I do think if you've read one or two other things by her and if you have an interest in gothic fiction then this is definitely one to read and one I would highly recommend. Do let me know down in the comments below if you have read Lois the Witch and what you thought of it and I'll be back tomorrow to talk about the next Elizabeth Gaskell book.